Good morning to a brand new day. Time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun. Learning is good for everyone. Good morning, fabulous first grade. Welcome to our PBS classroom. I'm Mrs. Hammock, and I'm so glad you joined me here today so we can learn all about writing this week. We've been working on grammar and writing and the mechanics of writing, and so I am super glad you joined me again here today. Hey, I'm looking forward to reading letters from you so that I can send you one of these cool activity books. There's mystery words and word searches and things to color. I think you'll really enjoy it. Please write me a letter and send me a picture or anything you'd like to send me so that I know what you've been doing. And you can send it right here to the studio and then we will send you one of these cool activity books. Great. Hey, it is Robert Munch week here in our classroom and I have another story to share with you called Andrew's Loose Tooth. This is one of my favorite stories about a little boy who has a loose tooth and he's trying everything he can to get that tooth to come out and he's not having any luck. But something unbelievable happens at the end of the story that you won't want to miss. So if you've ever had a loose tooth that was stubborn and didn't want to come out, you might really enjoy this story. So check out this book Andrew's Loose Tooth by Robert Munch at your Fresno County Public Library, or check Sora and see if it's available there. All right, it's time for us to unveil the number two top school for checking out books on Sora. And this week, it is Kalwa Eagles. Go Kalwa, great job. Wow, you are number two. I bet you could get to number one next week. I hope you do. Tomorrow we'll let you know who the number one school in our district is for checking out books. Keep up that great reading. You know, the more you read, the more that you will learn and the more that you will know, even if it's a book you're just reading for enjoyment. Books can be your very best friends. You can go on adventures, learn new things. It's a great way to spend some free time. So I hope you'll discover the love of reading. That's what we do here in our PBS classroom. It's time for us to get started. We are talking about nouns, all kinds of them. So let's review what we learned yesterday, or rather all week. A noun is a person, place, thing, or animal. These are the words that tell about a person, a place, and things and animals. That's what a noun is. You might have called it a naming word in kindergarten, but the real grown-up first grade word is noun. It's a noun, a person, place, or thing. Do you remember our little song to help it get stuck in our brain? Will you sing with me? Excellent. A noun is a person, place, or thing, a person, place, or thing, a person, place, or thing. A noun is a person, place, or thing, and it's also animals. All right, so yesterday I got things a little mixed up and we talked about possessive nouns. That means nouns that show something belongs to someone. And then we practiced with common and proper nouns. Did you notice that those two didn't go together? Everybody makes mistakes, right? Even teachers. So we're gonna work on both of those things again today, but I wanna make sure that you understand and let's review a little bit, okay? All right, so we learned about singular nouns and plural nouns. Do you remember what singular nouns are? Right, they tell one person, place, or thing. And what does a plural noun, what does that mean? Yes, it means more than one person, place, or thing. All right, and then we talked about Possessive nouns. A possessive noun means that it belongs to you, right? Or belongs to some, something belongs to someone. And we talked on our worksheet yesterday about 
common, and proper. Proper nouns are nouns that tell you exactly which person and exactly which place or exactly which thing. So I have a couple of practice sentences for you with common and proper nouns since I forgot to do them with you yesterday, okay? Great, so let's read our sentence. A girl shops at the store. So girl is a common noun because it could be any girl, we don't know which one. And store, it could be any store. It doesn't tell us specifically. So girl and store are common nouns. But if we changed that, and said, Tam shops at Target. Well, now we have proper nouns because we know exactly which girl and we know exactly which store. Do you see how Target had to have a capital T? Those t capital letters help us to know that those are the names of something important. All right, how about this one? The boy eats a treat. All right, the boy is a common noun and treat is a common noun. But if I said, Scott eats M&Ms, well now I know exactly who it is and I know exactly what the treat is he's eating. Scott and M&Ms, those are proper nouns because they tell me exactly which person and what they're eating, okay? All right, I'm glad you got that. And then we talked about possessive nouns. A possessive noun shows ownership. The girl's pencil is sharp. Remember we talked about the pencil belongs to the girl. So the apostrophe S tells us that that pencil goes with the girl. And an ant's hill is little. The hill belongs to the ant. All right. So now that we've gotten that straightened up, let's take a look at our possessive nouns practice because I really want to make sure that you have a lot of practice with this. Are you ready? Okay. A possessive noun tells who or what has something and it has an apostrophe S. So the hmm bed is soft. What do you see here in the picture? Right, a dog. So we're gonna pick the word dog. The dog apostrophe s because the bed belongs to the dog the dog's bed is soft my let's cross that out hmm tank is big hmm what do you think that one is you're not sure it's a pet you can't see it because it's not a fish but it's a pet my pet Apostrophe S, my pet's tank, because the tank belongs to the pet. A blank home is not a hut. A fox, and then we have apostrophe S, a fox's home is not a hut because the home belongs to the fox. Do you see how that works? All right. Let's do one more and then we're gonna to get to writing and if we have time, we'll come back and finish this. This hmm web is sticky. Oh, I forgot to cross those off. This bugs web bug and then apostrophe S shows ownership. The web belongs to the bug. Did you get that? Great, so when you're looking and you see an apostrophe S at the end of a noun, that's telling you that something belongs to that noun. Okay, great. Let's do some writing together. Here we have our draft model. It says read the draft model. Use the questions to help you add facts to the writing. Many kinds of fish live in the ocean. Fish can be big or small. Some fish like to swim together. What is the topic of the writing? What is this writing talking about? The main idea. Right, they're talking about fish. And what details tell about the main idea? They live in the ocean. Some are big 
or small, and some swim together. Our next question says, what facts could you add to the writing? So what could we add to this writing about fish? Right, if some fish like to swim together, then maybe some fish like to swim alone too, right? So let's count that out. Some fish like to swim alone. You ready to try it? Okay. We've got the word some, and I know it's right here in my story, so I can write it. I'm going to use it, capital S, O-M-E, some. I'm going to make a finger space, fish, like, L-I-K-E, some fish like two. Very good. Some fish like two. Two is a short word, so I can put it right here. Some fish like to, what's my next word? Swim. Good. Let's sound that one out. Ready? Sw. Oh, did you hear that beginning blend? Sw. Sw. S-W says sw. Swim. Some fish like to swim alone. Alone is A. Now let's try lone. L O N. And then we need a silent E on the end. Some fish like to swim alone. All right, I think we're ready to read. Now that we've added the last detail, let's read the whole story together. Are you ready? Great. Many kinds of fish live in the ocean. Fish can be big or small. Some fish like to swim together. Some fish like to swim alone. Did you see how adding that extra detail kind of finished up our sentence and made the story more complete? When we're writing stories, we're thinking about ideas and we need to make sure our ideas are connected. If we wrote something down here about swimming in the ocean, that's about a person. We're talking in this story about fish. So our sentence also needed to be about fish. All right, you did a great job. Let's see if we have a couple of seconds to finish off this last possessive noun. I want to make sure that you know this really well. The cubs, apostrophe S, den is full. The den belongs to the cub. Good job. I hope you'll practice some possessive nouns in your writing when you send me a letter here at the station. Goodbye now, goodbye now, the clock says we're done. I'll see you tomorrow, goodbye everyone. Goodbye. Good morning to a brand new day. Time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun. Learning is good for everyone.